Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Inside this very unassuming case is my most extravagant, some would say irresponsible purchase. In this video, we're gonna get into it and talk about why it's so special to me. All right. Inside this case is uh, what I consider to be the holy grail. This is a 2012 Michihiro Matsuda prototype parlor guitar. This is a very famous little guitar. It features in this fantastic book by Larry Robinson, uh, The Invisible Line. You'll have no doubt heard of Michi's work. He is one of the most inspirational luthiers alive today. And this is just, this is my pride and joy. So I first got introduced to the world of high-end custom guitars uh, by my very dear friend, Jim Fleeting, when he took me under his wing as his apprentice back in, I don't know, like 2008, 2009. It was, you know, over 15 years ago anyway. He was telling me one day that he was planning to go and take Irvin Samoji's voicing class out in Oakland, California. And I was like, who the hell is Irvin Samoji? and uh, why he's so excited about it. And he kind of delved into the story of who Irvin Samoji was, and you know, he introduced me to the idea of Irvin Samoji's apprentices. And of course, you can't talk about Irvin's apprentices without talking about Michi Matsuda. And we spent the rest of the day Googling Michi's work, going through his website, looking at all the outrageous instruments that he produced. And needless to say, at that time, you know, for me, I, the only thing I knew about acoustic guitars was, you know, what a Martin was. I was very much an electric bass guy. So if we fast forward, what, like five, six, seven years, I'm about to embark on my own journey as an apprentice to Irvin Samoji. And one of the main drivers for me was to go and work with the great man who taught one of my heroes, Michi Matsuda. So about a year ago, I was talking to my good friend, Marcus Wong, who has the Golden Era guitar shop out in Singapore. And he mentioned to me that one of his customers was liquidating some of his collection of high-end acoustic guitars. And amongst that collection was six Matsuda guitars. And in that collection of six was this beautiful parlor guitar. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, man, what I wouldn't give to have that in, in my own collection my collection of zero guitars. Um, so Marcus actually brought this guitar over to me from Singapore. We met at Paddington Station in London. I brought this guitar home and uh, opened it up for the first time in this workshop. I think we've got a little video clip of, of that happening. And yeah, it's joyous, just an absolutely joyous occasion to, to unbox this guitar. You know, I've always, I always imagine what it must be like, you know, when I'm packing a guitar up to send one out to a customer, for me to be on the receiving end of that and pop those latches for the first time and open this case, you know, it really was a kind of eyes out on stalks moment. Just, just magical. Let's give it a little listen. I'm certainly not gonna demo this guitar. I have ham fists and I don't play very well. I'm an electric bass player. So we'll let an expert give it a play. So as you can hear from that video, this guitar has just a really fascinating voice. You know, you'd expect from a little parlor like this for it to be boxy and, and kind of quite compressed. This thing is a little peanut, um, but it has a, a really amazing voice. For me, it's punchy, it's loud, it's got a great bass response, it's really sweet, 12 frets to the body. Um, amazing, Sitka Spruce soundboard with the rosewood back and sides, it's just, it's magical. So let's dive into the features a little bit. I think the most obvious thing to talk about is this soundboard. It is a, a Sitka Spruce soundboard. 
that's been scorched with gunpowder and then lightly raked to bring out the, the grain uh, of the Sitka spruce underneath. This is inspired by traditional Japanese instruments, the koto, which traditionally had a burnt soundboard. Uh, Michi had to find an innovative way of burning spruce on this guitar, and so he used gunpowder. We've got um, some Siamese rosewood for the back and sides. This is a very, very scarce timber. I was reading online that the last remaining rosewood trees in Thailand are actually guarded day and night by, by armed police. So. Yeah, really, really, uh, really precious timber and really, really stunning. We've got this crazy kind of Stauffer-esque headstock here, concealed tuners um, with this kind of etched, I think this is copper, maybe brass uh, backplate. Um, and the Japanese characters there say longevity and happiness, which uh, you know is quite, quite a poignant and, and appropriate thing in terms of uh, what this guitar means to me. We've got an elevated fingerboard with all sorts of amazing, typical Matsuda uh, structural flourishes on the inside, which completely blow my mind every time I look at this thing. I think for me, this guitar is, you know, especially as somebody who doesn't play a huge amount of acoustic guitar, you know, you might think, oh, this is such a frivolous purchase. Um, but for me, you know, this, this hangs up on my wall at home. I look at this every single day. It is a constant source of inspiration. It's a constant reminder for me to, to be authentic and to do the, the most authentic to me, you know, work that I can possibly do. You know, I'm constantly reminded to, to think about detail and think about how we, how we use detail to draw the eye to, to various different elements of the, of the instrument. You know, this guitar was very expensive, certainly relative to, to me, but I don't regret it at all. I feel just joy every time I look at this thing and uh, I'm just so grateful to, to have it and uh, to enjoy it.